Hey, what's up guys? Nate here from Protoculture again with another quick tip for you guys. Uh, today, I wanted to look at one of the new features in uh, Cubase, uh, Cubase 9 specifically. And um, a lot of you might know about this already, but uh, for me, it's totally worth the upgrade price just for this feature alone. Uh, if you're not using this all the time, you really should be. And that's the new sampler tracks um, in Cubase. So this has really kind of revolutionized the sampling for me just because it's so in integrated into the whole system now and it's so easy to use. So there's a couple of uses for it, like if you uh, are doing drum sequencing, um, We'll just grab a few samples and uh, you don't even need to drag them into your project. Just right click on a sample, say create sampler track and bam, you have you have your drum samples mapped to MIDI. Let's drop in something else. Yeah, let's drop that one in. Create sampler track. So now we have uh, separate individual channels with our uh, drum sounds on that you can just uh, record MIDI parts for. Oops. Let's tempo a little bit higher. Quantize and... That one there. And bam, so you've already got uh, some drum sounds in there. You can do these in audio, but what I like about having these as sampler tracks, I mean, they act just like audio channels you have, uh, or like instrument channels, you can apply EQ and uh, compression and so on to each individual track. Uh, they're, they're not just plain MIDI channels. Um, but you also have some control over the samples now. It's pretty basic, but it's enough uh, to get quite a bit of work done. Um, so you have your amp envelopes. I will just set up a loop here quickly. So you can see we've got our, our amp envelope, we can turn on our filter, you've got various different filter types, rate reduction. Got a nice crunchy lo-fi vibe. Uh, of course you've got pitch envelopes as well, which is really handy when you're doing drum sounds. Cool. Uh, and then what you can also do is you can export these to um, to a different instrument as well. So then you can also take this further and um, move these uh, files into all these tracks into other software. Uh, so you can take your editing further. I haven't really found too much of a use for... Um, transferring drum sounds to Groove Virginet because it seems to just do them one at a time. Um, but if you are working with loops, uh, you can send it to Groove, Groove Virginet and you can slice them up in Groove Virginet and so on. So there's there's some there's some cool stuff you can do in here as well. What I have found quite handy though is um, when you're working with instrument samples. So we'll find like a... Take this for example. Create a sampler track. Because there's keys in C3, we don't really need to change the root, but you can set the root for whatever you need be. And it's automatically mapped. And um, this uh, also works now with, uh, if you've got Halion or Patch or Pro, um, you can transfer it directly to Halion. 
Uh, obviously, there you can go and add a whole bunch of different stuff to your, your samples. It'll just map it to a new Hellion patch. And now, uh, from here, you could uh, go into your zones and actually go and start um, adding actual synth layers and modulation and all sorts of things. I'm not going to go into that because Hellion's a whole different beast altogether. But... Um, Patch Up Pro is pretty cool as well. Um, you can export to directly Patch Up Pro. And then you've got access to all the granular. also found it super useful for is resampling um, so in the case where you are doing um, quite fast moving notes uh, especially in bass sounds um, sometimes the envelopes of these synths are not fast enough to re-trigger properly I mean you get little um, slight indiscrepancies um, between notes and stuff which sometimes you don't want especially when you're working on faster stuff like uh, side trance and so on so uh, this is another cool little thing that I just learned um, if you right click down here on the the MIDI editor window in the main page you have this um, independent track loop function that you can turn on by default it's turned off if you turn that on um, you can hit independent track loop set a track loop just for this part I'm working on now and you'll see it'll continue looping even though there are no parts here it'll just keep looping because uh, it's actually separate from the main loop so I can carry on working on sounds here and they'll keep playing consistently throughout this whole uh, master loop so we'll just go and um, let's do let's pitch it up slightly So when you're working with, um, we'll just very, very quickly just make a little bass sound, yeah. Um, for some reason our loop is slightly out there, there we go. So you can, yeah, it's not quite tight enough that, I mean, you can fix some of that with uh, switching an oscillator to fixed phase, um, which will not, it will lock the phase into one position, which will make it decidedly tighter than it was before. That's a good start, but it's still not quite uh, tight enough for me. So what we're going to do is, um, instead of playing these notes like this uh, from the synth, we're just going to go and move this over, turn off this loop. And uh, just make one note. So now we're working at that key. Now, let me just render in place. I have a uh, keyboard shortcut set up to that, so I can just uh, hit Command Tilt. And uh, there's my bass note. Now, what's quite cool about this is that you can actually process this before you um, put this into the sampler. So you can do offline stuff or, um, you know, maybe process uh, envelope. Uh, process the envelope sh um, prior to actually putting it into the sampler. Maybe just to get a little bit more punchy, whatever. You can play around with that, and then obviously, before you go into the sampler again, you can just uh, 
rebalance that node out again. But now you're just going to go create a sampler channel or sampler track. And you can just drag your bounce file into there. And now you have a new instrument setup that you can play. So the thing about this is because it's sample playback, um, the phase is going to be locked in. It's always going to be the same sound triggering over and over again, which is going to make it a lot tighter than it would be if it were being generated each time. So we can copy these parts back again. And yeah. Also, um, if you head over to the wave editor, you can see there's just, you know, it doesn't always start. We actually got quite lucky with this one. It's starting pretty close to the beginning of the sample. But you can tweak the start point as well to get it even tighter if you want. Let's start using a little bit of the click. There we go. Let's try it there. Um, let's, we can get rid of this stuff now. Well, you might want to wait until you're 100% fine with the bass before you start deleting things, but uh, let's check it out. Nice and tight. Uh, envelopes are hitting really tightly now, so that's a good uh, that's a good start. So yeah, uh, the sampler tracks super cool. Um, check them out. You should be using those all the time because it really is a massive time saver. Uh, yeah, so cool. I hope you guys enjoyed the second part of these studio quick tips. Um, hit the subscribe button. I'll be doing more of these in the future. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed and this was helpful. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks very much for watching.